I think it was eight, eight years old. And the um, thing was, is all my friends had um, bicycles uh, in the neighborhood. And um, I didn't. So I asked my dad for a bike one day. And one day he came home with uh, an old Schwinn. It was a 20 inch Schwinn. And uh, I remember I painted it um, copper. I remember that for sure. And, uh, but I had it and he sort of said, if you want something, you've got to work for it. You can't um, just get it given to you. So that meant we, me and my brother had to restore or fix our own bikes. We went to Pep Boys. Back in the day, you went to Pep Boys and you found all your parts. So I went to Pep Boys, got the paint, got the sandpaper, got the tools, bearings, grease, all this stuff to rebuild the bike. Now the bike was, you know, sad shape, but it wasn't like some of the ones I get, you know, where they're all bent up and stuff. This was just dirty, nasty, and ugly. So all I really had to do was pull it all apart, sand it, um, paint it that copper color that I wanted to paint it. Um, you know, polished up all the chrome instead of sending everything out to the chrome shop. I didn't have any money. Um, greased the bearings, put it all together. And then when it came time for everybody to ride around the neighborhood, all my friends come down. I told them I was working on a bike. They all came to our house, rode all the way around the neighborhood, which it was just amazing because I remember being so happy. And this bike was the coolest bike of anybody else's because I built it. So that was a, that was a good day. called a Fli Schwinn Flying Star. I don't really know what year it is yet, but right here on all of the Schwinns is a serial number, and it's always right there on the left-hand side by where you put the rear tire on. So there's an F133731. If you look that up online, that'll tell you exactly what year it is, what color it used to be, it tells you everything. Stuff like this, see this is all uh, put together with rivets. So when you blast it, I mean you can re-rivet it. Uh, you probably never find those kind of rivets, but I like painting them all together. So we'll do all the body work, straighten it out. You can see it's just bent, see how it's bent. So all these threads, as you notice that I go the wrong way first, some of them are reverse threads. And it makes sense because if it wasn't reverse thread and you started driving it and pedaling it, it's going to end up coming off. That there's the chain link. That one right there. And if you look at the other side, there's no clip on it. You sort of got to pry it off. And when it goes on, you sort of hit it on. You can sort of see what it does. It just clips over itself, and then these two sort of spread apart a little bit as it goes through. But you have to take that off to get the whole chain off. It's just going to stay on the frame. Now, i got to chrome this, the crank. This is a crank. This is a sprocket. This is the original sprocket for a 1950s Schwinn. The other thing is when I send this piece to the chrome shop, it's imperative that I put tape on this to make the chrome plater realize do not chrome plate these threads. If he chrome plates those threads more than they really are right now, you're going to have to run a special tap over them. It's pretty hard to find. You'd have to take it to a bike shop. And the bike was maintained at some point in its life for sure. I have seen these where they will not come off without me heating them with a torch to expand the nut enough to where it'll come off the threads. Okay, so this goes like this, this, and that. So that's, uh, yep. 
like that. They had this bike shop called Memory Lane, and it was the best. I mean, their catalog looked like they did it in the 50s. It was so old. Well, they were awesome, and we get the parts from them, and then he passed away, which is what's happening to a lot of the great things like pinstriping. Like, they're all going away. And unless one of these young kids pick it up or get it, it's gone. So what happened with this memory lane shop, a guy came along and bought it all. The problem is the guy that came along and bought it all was a collector. So now the collector ain't willing to sell parts. So now it makes quite a bit of an issue for the guy trying to restore something because he can't get parts. I want to keep these uh, grips. The way to get them off is to heat them up, just like anything else. You beat a piece of metal, uh, you heat it, and it expands, and then it should slip off. Get them on the same way. Heat them up, put them on. Some of the old hard rubber wheels that go on tricycles and stuff. You heat them up with water, and then you can put them on. Mm -hmm. 